So many YouTubers right now are predicting that there will be a collapse of China imminently. And there's a reason why a lot of these people think this way. If you look at what Chinese people are allowed to invest in, it's very limited. Think about how limited it is if you're in China. You can't really invest in American markets or European markets. You're only allowed to take about $50,000 out of the country of China and park it uh, somewhere else. And you could, and that's, uh, it's very, very hard. It's very difficult. There are ways to get around these rules, but it's very difficult. So then that leaves two options, either the Chinese real estate market or the Chinese uh, stock market. And Chinese stock market has been a roller coaster for a long period of time. So a lot of people in China don't really trust the, the stock market over there, quite understandably. And so this leaves them with one option, which is real estate. And real estate in, in China is, uh, I think people are starting to realize that's not anywhere, that's not as safe as, as people had, had imagined it to be. Now the Chinese real estate market is massive. There are just tons and tons of these buildings that people buy in the middle of nowhere and they consider it an investment. A lot of these properties are actually way more expensive than what you probably pay in your own area in terms of what it costs in terms of uh, how much you make per year. In other words, like in the US, uh, the average uh, home is about four times someone's income, whereas in China, it's about 25 to 30 times. And some in the big city, this could be 40 times. And it's weird the way they invest because they don't really invest in their primary residence per se. They're investing in some uh, area they expect to be the new hip or big part of China. And so you get these big husks of apartment buildings being built in the middle of nowhere. Nobody lives in it, nobody decorates it, and they're expected uh, to just randomly appreciate it. They tend to really sell it to the, basically the next, the next sucker in a few years. And there really is a, a kind of a Ponzi scheme because nobody necessarily expects to use these apartments. They're just expected to hold it like a hot potato until uh, until it appreciates and then they sell for a profit and, and then repeat. Uh, but here's the problem though. The whole system is starting to operate like a Ponzi scheme because some of these real estate developers, they they take they take the money uh, for a deposit, and then they're on to the, they use that deposit money to not necessarily uh, make the the property that you purchased. They're using the money to uh, purchase uh, uh, more land and build the next uh, area in China that's going to be big, and as a result. This is works like a house of cards because at some point in time, the Ponzi starts to run out of money because some people in China are refusing to pay for their real estate project because they kind of are thinking, hmm, well, you've been working on this for like a year and the property is still not, not developed. I'm going to stop, stop paying. Over there, you, you start paying way before your uh, your property is actually even even built, which is kind of a strange arrangement anyway. So what a lot of these YouTubers are saying is they think that as people stop paying for their mortgages, that at some point the whole economy will collapse. Uh, and, but if you look at this, the stocks, uh, the Chinese stocks, they have actually been going down since 2020. So it's not really a recent thing. I think it's funny when everybody starts noticing that there's a problem, It's it's actually been going on for a lot longer than a lot of people realize. The Chinese real estate bubble has gone on for a very, very long time too. And the reason why it probably will not collapse the whole system is because uh, China will do what uh, we do, we do, will just reinflate their uh, bubble. They'll cut rates, which they're doing right now. And they'll probably uh, force some people to uh, not get their money back from the bank and what are you going to do you're going to you're going to sue the government or have a protest they they will just arrest them so people think uh as winston there's a serpenza on youtube he basically said the problem with a lot of people is they're projecting the way things work in the western countries and saying oh that's what would happen in china like in, china, in the u.s uh, basically the government would have been <laughs> voted out of office and people would be very angry about losing their money and there would be all kinds of ways to try to 
uh, try to make people whole or for people to get losses. And instead, what we're going to get is a lot of chaos. But in the end, the economy probably will not collapse in entirely. Uh, for one thing, the real estate developers they're going to keep they're going to keep on building because the government will bail them out. Some bank depositors will get some of their money back probably from uh, because they're starting to become so many protests they probably will get some money back but probably not all of it and what the government will do also over there is they will start shutting down even more communication a lot of people don't realize that in china there's no such thing as encrypted uh communication so they they know exactly what you're saying to your friends so if you're saying to your friends hey uh there's something wrong with the banking system i'm not able to get my money out they they definitely will so uh, they might send a police after you or or tell or basically try to tell you to stop talking about those kinds of issues so that is a big 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 problem and then that's one way of trying to at least cut off some of the some of the, the problems and the protests that, that happen so you're not going to get widespread protests around the whole country more likely than not it might be an isolated thing you're seeing it in Hunan and Few other places but in the end the government is going to plug the holes and it will probably kick the can down to another day so they're probably especially there will not be a collapse on a certain day how would they why would that why how can someone predict exactly the date that the Chinese system uh, collapses that just seems hard to believe and a lot of this shows you that while a lot of people in China thought that real estate is any different from the Chinese companies because Chinese companies are basically all uh, Ponzi schemed as well. They inflate their earnings. They're they're not really complying with international rules about accounting and auditing and stuff like that. But uh, real estate kind of works the same way because uh, they're just kind of just hoping to keep the bubble going and keep selling and there's no fundamentals that are based uh, the real estate is not based on fundamentals over there. It's not based upon people's income. It's just based upon you buy it, use a lot of leverage, and then you sell it to someone else for a higher price. But nobody intends to live in these units. So, what is that other than a Ponzi scheme? If it's not, a, if there's no productive purpose to it. Anyway, I would like to hear your comments in the comments below. I expect a lot of people to dislike the video because there's a lot of people who don't like videos that, that are negative about China. So, to be sure to click the like button and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.